Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. Today, I'm gonna to teach you a bunch of chords and some chord progressions in D, A, E, A, C sharp E tuning, which sounds like this. Lovely sound of tuning, right? Um, if you haven't tried this tuning already, then this is a good place to start. Uh, the tuning is so D, A, E, A, C sharp, and E. So the E string is going to come down to D, A stays the same, the D is tuned up to E, the G is going to be tuned up to A, B is going up to C sharp and E staying as it is. So uh, these three strings are going up. So if you want to put a thinner gauge of strings on there, that's completely fine. Or an alternative is you can use uh, a thicker gauge of string and all tune down to C, G, D, B, G, D, I believe. Uh, that's the same kind of tuning, but just lower. And then you could just throw a capo on or something like that. All right, so onto the chords themselves. Uh, these are chords that I like to use, and I believe you would like to use them too. So let's get stuck in, and you obviously take away these chords and start writing your own ideas with them. That's what I want you to do. So uh, they're going to start from either the sixth string or from the fifth string here. Uh, so first I'll show you the chords starting from the lower string here, from the sixth string. And I'm going to show you some major or minor chords, a dominant chord and also a diminished chord. Alright, so first we have this lovely major nine chord. And all you need to do here, so this is a D major nine, is um, put your finger on the second fret here. And obviously if you're going to play it higher up. In that case you would bar it. And of course these chords are all movable. So next onto the minor shape, this is a, a minor 9 shape. So you can already start to hear that, you know, these chords work very nicely together, hence why I like using them. So next we're going to do a dominant chord, so this is a 7 chord. Uh, we're going to do an E dominant, which is a little tricky to finger. So I'm barring my uh, index finger here over the first two strings. Which sounds really nice, right? And then if you use it in context. Again, yeah, we're starting to build a, a, a canvas here. We're, we're colouring in the canvas, right? Sounding nice. And uh, then lastly, the diminished, this is going to be a, actually it's going to be a minor 7 flat 5, I should say, not a, not a diminished. This is a, a G sharp minor 7 flat 5 chord. And again, in some kind of context. So diminished chords, or minor 7 flat 5 chords, always sound really good. Uh, resolving to the first. So you've got that tension and blissful release there. So let's move over to the fifth string. So let's start from this string to voice our chords. And we're going to start again with a major nine. So this time A major nine. Sounds really nice. And then we're going to have the minor variation, which this time is going to be a minor seven. Again, you can hear they're just combining it with some other chords, starting to, you know, give some colour to stuff, right? And uh, next is going to be then the, the dominant chords. This is going to be another dominant seven, which is not too hard to voice. Again, in terms of a chord progression, followed by the dominant. Let's do a diminish, uh, sorry, a minor seven. Again, sounding wonderful. And then lastly, uh, the minor seven flat five chord in this in this position, which is uh, a little tricky to finger. Again, resolve it nicely. Uh, 
Oh no, something to mess around with like that. <laughs> right, so um, obviously feel free to take these chords away and start experimenting with them. Uh, I'm going to talk about now some, give you some example chord progressions using the chords that we just learned and uh, basing ideas around them so you can get some more insight of possibly how you can use these and um, you know how key signatures work with chords and key signatures. So if you're interested in that, uh, let's continue. So uh, one of my favorite chord progressions, and you hear this one quite a lot, is um, a 4 to 1 progression, which sounds something like this. So this is an A major. So a D, then to a B, into the A. And then you could also just do a variation of 4 1. So here's a quick example of that. So at the start, there's a riff, and it's based around these three chords this 4 2 1 progression. I'm just using the root notes to guide that. And then afterwards, notice how I go to a... Just that four to one progression there, but obviously I'm, um, I'm embellishing the chords a bit by adding some extra notes and stuff. So I encourage you to try this sort of stuff out too. So here's another 4-1 progression as well, just to give you an idea of how you can use these chords to make different ideas. This time we're going to be in the key of D, and uh, we're going to go G. Lovely little progression there. 4-1, yeah, it's used ever so much. It sounds excellent. And I made this one a bit more bluesier by adding the dominant chord in here, the A, at one point. coming back down to the first. Uh, so have a listen to this one quickly and see how I put the, the dominant chord in there and how the rhythm and the whole piece has like more of a bluesy feel to it by adding this uh, dominant chord into the progression. <laughs> Right, so um, for a little bit of a more spicy chord progression, but still sounds really good, this one's in the key of A major, and I'm going to actually borrow another chord from the key of A minor. So we're going to start on the first, so an A major 9. And then it goes to the third, the minor, so. We've actually made a little variation here to make it fit a bit better. We're just going to play like this instead. Then for the borrowed chord, which is a, a G major 9. And then we can go to the fourth, which is a D. So here's that progression in full.
So now onto the uh, final example progression I'm going to give you. And no um, open tuning video is finished without uh, complete without using a capo. So that's what we'll be doing here. Uh, this one is more another riffy kind of idea, but I want to show you how it's all based around chords. So it's all based around the root notes, but the overall feel of the chord is still there, be it, you know, the tonality of major minor, dominance or, you know, a diminished chord, like a minor seven flat five. But anyway, this progression was inspired by like more of like a tiny moving parts kind of idea. The, the riff is based around these, these chords. So it starts with a major nine. And then we go to the third. So minor seven, minor nine chord, sorry. Come to the major, and we come down to the second, minor second. There's a really nice progression. So first, third, fourth, and then second. And here's how that riff sounds. Okay, so that's everything for this video. Um, I hope I've gone in depth enough for you. I also have uh, some major and minor scales that you can use in these tunings, and that's all included in my uh, math rock guitar techniques and music theory ebooks. So if you haven't checked that out already, there'll be a link for that down below in the description if you want to find out a bit more about this tuning. And um, I'm hoping to give you. I, I hope I've given you enough inspiration to go and try this tuning if you haven't already or if you have tried this tuning some I have some fresh motivation for you to go and um, try and write some riffs and come up with some ideas and um, I want to say thank you for watching this video and I'd like to say thank you to all the patrons that support the channel and everybody else that supported the channel by buying merchandise or any other small way that you've um, helped me keep me going. Oh and if you'd like uh, the chords chord charts so there's a link for that down below in the description too anyway thank you very much and i'll see you next time goodbye